also continuing on with learning about World War II in this unit. You're going to be looking at the battles of World War II in this section. So we're going to kind of split this up into our battles um, that took place in Europe and the battles that took place in the Pacific theater. Um, now, as far as the battles go that you can see listed here, these are not all of the battles that happened in Europe. These are just uh, some of the major battles that took place between 1940 and 1944. Um, so the Battle of Britain, I uh, kind of already mentioned this uh, in one of the previous sections of notes, but that was a major air attack by the German Luftwaffe or the German Air Force um, against England. Uh, ultimately, the British did win this, but really the, the reason they won is because they didn't give up control of uh, Great Britain to the Germans, but there was a significant amount of damage done um, by the German Air Force um, from these attacks. Now, uh, what we see happen in August of 1942 uh, is a really major event, and this is the Battle of Stalingrad that takes place from August of 1942 to February of 1943. This is one of the largest battles, um, and it's considered to be the single largest battle of the war. Um, and this happens between German forces and the Soviet Union. If you remember, there was that Nazi-Soviet pact that um, Hitler and Stalin had made. But um, after uh, the war has been going on for a couple of years, Hitler decides that he wants to uh, get more territory and he's going to march troops into Soviet controlled territory. Um, so by doing this, he's, uh, basically negating that pact that they had made and, uh, the Soviet forces are going to attack back, um, at the Germans and, um, in doing so they're going to wipe out a large portion of the German army and they're able to prevent them, um, from obtaining control of Stalingrad. Now, uh, at this point, once this battle is taking place, now the Soviet Union has joined the Allies in the war. Now, uh, jumping forward to D-Day, which we'll talk more about uh, here in a couple slides, but that is June 4th, uh, and that's when it begins through July of 1944. This was uh, the Normandy campaign that takes place um, starting in northern France, and it's the Allies trying to regain control uh, of France from the Axis powers. And then uh, following the Normandy campaign going into uh, the winter of 1944 into 1945, we have the Battle of the Bulge. This battle is going to prevent the Allied forces from being able to continue into Germany, but it is going to force Germany to have to focus all of its eff efforts on that western border because they're trying to prevent the Allies from getting any further um, along uh, in their campaign toward Germany, which this allows for their eastern border to be opened up to uh, further attacks from the Soviets. So uh, this leads to uh, the Battle of Berlin, which the Battle of Berlin is in the spring of 1945. And this is the Soviet forces taking over the city of Berlin, which is the German capital. Um, upon doing this, Hitler is going to kill himself before the Allies can get a hold of him, uh, and the Allied forces will ultimately end up surrounding uh, the German forces from the West as well. Um, and the Battle of Berlin, Berlin really signifies the end um, for the Axis powers. Now, as far as looking at our major battles that happened in the Pacific theater, um, you'll see that, uh, which we'll look here at a map in a moment, you'll see that all of these are happening at different islands um, throughout the Pacific. And we did have this campaign known as island hopping that was going on during this time. Um, so the Battle of Coral Sea, which is going to be uh, in May of 1942, we have our allied forces fighting against the Japanese forces. Uh, as this battle is taking place, both sides are going to take a significant amount of damage. Ultimately, it is said to be an allied victory, but it was still a, a big loss on both sides. Then we have the Battle of Midway um, that happens uh, the following month, and this is considered to be the turning point in the Pacific theater. So the turning point of uh, World War II in the Pacific is the Battle of Midway. Um, the reason for that is because this is going to be a major U.S. naval victory over the Japanese and is going to contribute to the U.S. starting to regain control um, of the Pacific Islands that the Japanese had already taken a hold of. Uh, continuing forward from this, we know that uh, 
The Allies had kind of decided they were going to try to focus on ending the war in Europe first before they focused on the Pacific Theater. So for a while, we do still have fighting going on, but um, there's not a whole lot of movement going forward uh, for the Allied forces. Um, that's not going to be until 1945. We have the Battles of Iwo Jima and Battles of Okinawa. Both of these um, are largely involving U.S. troops, the U.S. Uh, Army, Navy, and Marines taking control of these islands, the island of Iwo Jima and the island of Okinawa. And both of those are getting extremely co uh, close to mainland Japan, which we'll see here um, in the map in a moment. So looking at this map, you can see um, we've got way over here, the attack on Pearl Harbor. We've got more Japanese victories that are going to happen uh, into 1942. But then we can see um, over here, we're, we're starting to get some battles um, more in the, the Southern Pacific happening um, in 1942 into 1943. Um, Battle of Coral Sea was really important because it prevented the Japanese from being able to continue toward um, Australia, which Australia was a, an allied power. So um, it was very important that the, the other allies did not lose control of Australia. Um, and then as far as the, the rest of the battles go, you can see as we're getting a little bit later, looking at our dates, 1944, um, and then 1945, things are working closer and closer toward mainland Japan, which is right here. Um, so as, as things uh, continue on, we can see that the allies are getting closer and closer to um, having a victory in the Pacific theater. Um, and meanwhile, Japan is waging a war on land, as you can see over here, and um, by sea. So definitely um, splitting a lot of their, their resources in uh, different ways. But we do see, as so we get to 1945, which is going to be a very significant year for the war, um, that we do have uh, the Allied forces getting closer to mainland Japan. Now, as far as the D-Day invasion goes, D-Day is considered to be the turning point of the war in Europe. So as far as the D-Day invasion goes, I mentioned it began on June 6th of 1944. There was actually months of planning that went into this. Um, Dwight Eisenhower is going to be one of the main generals um, planning this invasion. They uh, planned it on this particular day because it uh, was a full moon, so the tides would be higher, and this was a uh, sea-based invasion. So um, this is the, the single largest um, sea-based invasion to happen in history. Uh, its uh, operation name was Operation Overlord, and it's going to involve over 150,000 Allied forces that were storming the beaches of northern France, and there was five beaches um, where uh, this fighting is going to take place. Now, as far as the Germans were concerned, um, they did know that something was going to happen. They didn't know really exactly what was going to happen, but they did have an understanding that something would be happening. Um, they didn't know how large of an invasion this would be, but they they could foresee that that something like this was going to take place. They do have the beaches um, prepared. You can see from the images here. They had these landmines set up to prevent uh, any sort of, of water craft from really being able to get further up on the beaches. So these were obstacles um, in place so that they, they couldn't be able to, to easily maneuver any sort of um, heavy equipment further up the beach. And then um, once they were off of the main beach, there was large cliff sides around much of um, these beaches. And the, the German forces would have machine guns. Um, and bunkers set up all along those cliff sides, pointed down at the beach. And um, basically every single inch of the beaches was pre-sighted by machine guns so that they could hit a target anywhere along the beach um, that they needed to. Which uh, the night before the invasion began on the beaches, there was um, groups of paratroopers that dropped in uh, from the air. Uh, further inland, and their main goal was to try to block access to the roads leading to the coast. Um, and they realized that if the Germans were able to get as many resources as they needed to the beach, that this invasion would never be successful. So for the paratroopers, it was vital that they blocked any sort of German access to those roads to prevent unlimited resources from being able to get um, to those troops that were 
on the coast. Um, all in all, when this invasion is done, over 100,000 German and Allied forces are killed, um, but this is going to start the push for the Allied forces to start regaining uh, control of France. And then ultimately, um, from the D-Day invasion in June of 1944, we have those continual battles happening. I mentioned the Battle of the Bulge and then the Battle of Berlin. Ultimately, that will lead to um, the European uh, surrender uh, of the Axis powers, and that will be on May 8th of 1945. This day is known as VE Day or Victory in Europe Day, um, and this is when Germany formally surrendered to the Allies. And once this surrender happens, um, obviously people are very happy um, that the, the German forces have surrendered, but now the Allies can focus their efforts on the Pacific theater. And you can see even from the, the image there, it says it's VE Day and celebrating the fact that the, the Germans have surrendered, but then right beneath it, it says, remember Pearl Harbor. So they're realizing that, yes, part of the war is over, but we still have to finish uh, the rest of the war, and that is the war that was happening in the Pacific theater as well.